thank you all for joining us. Uh, we are really excited to kick off this uh, webinar series. And just so you know, um, PRO, the national group, we are going to start having at least one webinar each month uh, for our members and each affiliate will be planning two of those a year. So uh, we are thrilled to have Kiyoki. They are our first of this smart series um, presentation. And so they will have, this series has six, right? Six different webinars? Uh, there are five. Five, sorry about that. I'm making, a, I'm creating a new one. And they are going to be every Tuesday from 1230 to 130 Eastern time. And we are recording today. And after um, the recording is processed, we'll load it to our YouTube channel and we will share it with you after um, in the coming days. So we hope that is helpful. Uh, in November, we have an economist, Chris Cool, uh, sponsored by Pella, who will be with us to give us a uh, just his take on what to expect uh, here at the end of 2022 through uh, 2023. So that is, um, and he is a very unique economist. He has a very dry, fun, witty sense of humor. Um, and not that all economists aren't funny, dry, and witty, but he seems to be more so. Anyway, so we're really excited about that. And I am now just going to kick it over to Keith Vaughn, who is a member of the um, Pro Mid Atlantic uh, affiliate and also a customer of our client of Kiyoki's to introduce them. Hmm. Uh, thanks, Angela. So, uh, Keith Vaughn, I'm the owner at Spectrum. Uh, the folks at Kiyoki asked me to say a few words. Uh, we signed on with them about two months ago. And so if you were to go to our uh, website, uh, that's not their work. Um, but uh, welcome to, I love the title, Attract and Convert a Marketing Masterclass uh, for Contractors. They focus on contractors. Um, you also know that today is a CEO, CEU class and there's five of them so it's a nice way to get your continuing education um as background i can tell you how great they are um they're a boutique uh, media firm uh, marketing company they specialize digital platform marketing strategies branding uh in in logo development websites and then of course all the various uh digital digital platforms they're also a member, uh, so it's worth noting that they they're they're a pro member. They're and they're accredited also to do the CEO training, and they they're mainly doing this to give back to the the contracting community. So enough said. I'm happy to answer any questions offline. Feel free to get my information. Um, our presenter today is Laura Walsh, and she's Kiyoki's director of marketing, uh, digital marketing. So, Laura, welcome to the pro webinar that you're in charge of. Thank you, Keith. Uh, I appreciate the introduction. And uh, let's get started. Um, I just first want to say hello, pro. Um, thanks for having us today. And welcome to Attract and Convert, your foundation for marketing success. This webinar is the first installment of the Kiyoki Contractor Marketing Contractor Education Series. As Angela mentioned, there's going to be five total um, every Tuesday at 1230 Eastern Time. So tune back in. Uh, I'll, I'll go over what they're going to be going over later. Uh, but today, let's focus on your marketing foundations. Um, first of all, Kiyoki Contractor Marketing, as Keith mentioned, is a design and marketing agency based in beautiful Sandpoint, Idaho. Uh, pretty far from where you guys are, but also very beautiful. Our team of designers and strategists work directly with remodelers and home builders like you to construct a strong digital footprint to bring in the right leads for your business. And uh, my name is Laura Walsh. I'm the digital marketing director for Kiyoki Contractor Marketing. And on this webinar, I'll be introducing the Attract to Convert concept and discussing how it relates to your logo and website and your marketing strategy. So a few quick housekeeping items. This webinar will be around 45 minutes and we will have about 15 minutes or so at the end for Q&A. 
the Zoom chat will be open during the presentation. So I encourage you to submit your questions as they arise. Sometimes it can be difficult to go back and think back what your question was. And of course, we always welcome feedback and we'll be sharing a link to a post webinar survey at the end of today's webinar. So let's dive in. Our goal today is to help you cut through the noise of marketing your contracting business and arm you with a new perspective on how to do it successfully. What we're going to be talking about is how to think strategically about your marketing. And we're going to share our approach, but we're hoping that you come away with ideas that you can apply yourself either internally or with your current provider. Okay, so let's say you want to learn more, <clears throat> excuse me, about digital marketing for your contracting business. And instead of listening to this webinar, you head on over to Google and do a little research. And you start digging into the search results. If you do that, you're going to end up with a big long list. And in fact, that's what we like to call it, the big list. You've probably heard of most of the things on this list and maybe you tried some of them with your own business. Maybe you did it yourself or maybe you hired it out. Either way, it's enough to keep a person very busy with their marketing. But we're not here to talk about just doing marketing, uh, picking things off the list and getting busy. We're going to talk about what it takes to get results from your marketing. Which brings me to our first principle of successful marketing. And that is that successful marketing generates leads. Pretty much all of the contractors that we've worked with are interested in the same end result, leads, and I'm sure you guys are too. So that is a big part of how we define marketing success. We're trying to increase not only the number of leads, but also the quality of leads that you're getting from your marketing. So how do you go from doing marketing, which is you know, pulling random tactics off our big list, to taking actions that will not only get more leads, but better leads? We need to think beyond the list. We have contractors like you who come to us wanting, of course, more leads, and maybe they're not happy with their current marketing or website provider, and they want us to get started right away doing some marketing. Get busy, flip that marketing switch, and get those leads coming in. And while we appreciate the, the enthusiasm, ultimately we want our clients to get better results from their marketing dollars. So in these situations, we need to apply the brakes, take a step back and look at the bigger picture, which brings us to attract and convert, the big picture of lead generation. Instead of thinking in terms of all of the different platforms you could be on, the ads, the trade shows, all of the different tactics, that uh, big list, let's keep in mind the end goal. Um, and it sounds like maybe someone's unmuted. If you could mute yourself, I'd be appreciated. Thank you. Um, so let's keep in mind that end goal. And that's about turning strangers into leads. So let's talk about that journey and put our actions into the attract and convert framework. Here we have a flow of strangers, people who have never heard of your business becoming visitors, people who are now aware of your business and turning into leads, people who are now considering hiring you for a remodel or similar project. Now let's add our attract and convert framework to this picture. On the attract side, we're doing things to build awareness to get the message out. We're doing things to increase traffic and we are always looking at the data and adjusting in order to improve targeting and become more relevant to our audience. We call this grouping of activities on the attract side, turning strangers into visitors, our marketing strategy. On the convert side of the funnel, we are looking to establish a sense of trust, communicate our values so that we can create emotional connections with our visitors and to differentiate our business from the competition. Broadly speaking, we can think of these activities as our brand strategy, or to put it another way, attract is about getting the right people in the right place to your site at the right time to convert them. They have to like what they see when they get there. And that brings us to our second principle of marketing success. Successful marketing is holistic. And what do I mean by that? You can't just tend to one side. You need to consider your attraction and conversion strategies. So think about it this way. Attract without convert is kind of like not cleaning up your house before your dinner party guests arrive. 
if you spend your efforts on the attract side, bringing people to your website, but your website looks like the digital equivalent of this coffee table, how much return on investment do you think you're going to get? And on the other hand, convert without attract is kind of like putting a baseball diamond in a cornfield. You might have some goats show up, but as far as I know, goats don't need remodels. So this is a situation where you have a nice website and a great portfolio, but very little traffic. You're simply not getting much exposure to people who don't already know you exist. The point is you have to pay attention to both sides, what it takes to attract and what it takes to convert. Which brings us to our third principle. That is that successful marketing puts first things first. So what comes first? Just like these two, we're going to flip it. If we return once again to the idea of attract to convert, we're going to start with the activities that fall more on the convert side. We're talking about your brand strategy, which should be geared towards building trust, communicating values, and figuring out how you can differentiate. These activities create the foundation for your attract activities later on. So with that in mind, let's talk about your brand. Uh, now, I want to establish something before we get any further, and that is that your brand is not your logo. Your brand is a person's gut feeling about your product, service, or company. So it's really about how people view and perceive your company. Your identity or brand identity are the more tangible elements of your brand, such as color, design, typography, and brand voice. These are the things that help people recognize your brand. And then at the center of the whole thing, we have your logo, which is the graphic element or symbol that represents your brand. So your brand is not your logo, but is central to your brand as a whole, which is why it gets a lot of attention. And we'll get more into that later. But for now, the point I want to emphasize is that your brand is a feeling. It's the impression someone has when they first encounter or interact with your company and rightly or wrongly, First impressions matter, and branding is about setting expectations. That first impression is made in an instant subconsciously, and we want our brand's values to align with those of our intended audience. We want to make sure that that first impression is the right one. If we're in the operating room, we want to look like the guy in the left, but at the motorcycle rally, shirt sleeves are most definitely optional. How do we get about setting the right expectations with our branding? Well. We do it by asking questions. Questions like, what problems do we solve? Who do we solve them for and why? What do we stand for? What do we value? What makes us different? So your branding is your what, your who, and your why. And once you've answered those questions, you want to reflect the answers in your marketing collateral and your client interactions. All of those touch points you have with people shape their perception of your brand and should be aligned with your brand values and purpose. So now that we have a better understanding of what branding is, I wanna talk about specific touch points through which people will experience your brand. And that is your logo and your website. So here's the truth. Your logo and website will play an outsized role in your marketing success. So your I'm logo doing, is your most education. widely... <laughs> There's, uh, I think someone's unmuted. I'm going to mute you. Um, so your logo is your most widely used, you could even say ubiquitous, piece of marketing collateral. It's on everything. Your website, your business cards, your hats, your truck, and it really sets the tone for your marketing as a whole. Your website, on the other hand, is the hub of your marketing strategy. It's where you should be sending your online traffic and making that all-important first impression. And if you're wondering what Kevin Hart is doing there, you can uh, just kind of think of him as a yardstick. Uh, little Kevin Hart there. So we're going to spend the next few minutes focusing on your logo, and then we'll spend a little time talking about your website. And I want to do that keeping in mind our convert guiding principle, which is that they have to like what they see. Why is your logo important within that convert framework? Your logo is your first opportunity to build trust. And it does that by communicating professionalism. We're established and we take ourselves seriously. And by connecting emotionally with our audience to communicate your company's values. 
So let me show you what I mean by that. Take a look at this set of logos and think of a few words that come to mind. So I've put together a few here. We have square deal, kind of gives me an engineering vibe. It's a little bit cold with that uh, silver and gray, it's heavy and serious. Next we have Desdal. It's a little bit confusing, kind of not sure what's going on. A little bit drab, uh, once again with that grayish tan. Outdated, definitely, I think it belongs maybe more in the 80s and, or 90s. And kind of gives me the idea that they pour concrete. And then we have Lent construction. It's pretty industrial, not necessarily a bad thing, structural, commercial, and strong. That red is really bold. But now let's look at another set and do the same thing. First, we have this one. It's fresh, inspiring, integrated, and reliable. This one we have pretty contemporary, luxurious, elegant, and competent. And lastly, this one's definitely craftsman, still strong, earthy, natural, and capable. The point of this is that good or bad, your logo sends a message. So these are all examples of rebrands we've done for clients. The before's up top and the after's are down below. Which set of logos communicate more professionalism? And which set communicates the values or traits that you think will resonate better with the type of clients that you want? Your logo will send a message. So you want to ask yourself if it is sending the right one for the people that you are trying to reach. If you approach it with intention, you're going to get a better result. Okay. So with that in mind, I want to emphasize a couple of important takeaways about logos. And the first is that your logo is shorthand for your company's values. Through its imagery, color, typography, and even whether or not it looks professionally designed, all send, all send a message about your company, what you want to do and what you care about. And second, your logo sets the stage for how your brand, for how your business, sorry, presents itself. Your logo is essentially the face of your company. Oftentimes, it's going to be one of the first things your potential customers see when they encounter your business, and it will influence their initial opinions, even if only subconsciously. But think of it like the cover of a book. And yes, we all know we shouldn't judge, but we have an instantaneous emotional response to visual stimuli, stimuli as soon as we see it. And no one wants to argue with that baby. Am I right? So now, fortunately, our entire marketing communication strategy does not come down to just the logo. So to extend our book analogy a little further, if your logo is the cover of the book, your website is what's printed on the pages, right? It's where you have the opportunity to build on those values that you've identified for your business and give visitors a clearer picture of who you are, what you do, and how you will make their lives better. You're, you're not relying on that initial impression that someone might uh, get from your logo alone. You can lay it all out there, really get into the details. So let's talk about your website. Whether you're doing digital marketing to direct traffic to your website or relying on referrals, your website's going to play a central role in their journey from stranger to lead. And in fact, your website is your most important marketing asset. It's where your business lives online and the hub of your marketing activities. Because of the amount of information that you can, can convey to someone, it's where you have the opportunity to convince them that they should go ahead and give you a call or fill out that contact form. Remember our Attract and Convert framework? Over here on the Convert side, turning visitors into leads, we're primarily concerned with establishing trust, communicating our values and differentiation, just like we were when we were talking about logos. But I'm going to add one more thing uh, now that we're talking about websites, and that, that is that we need to talk about clarity. Now that we're dealing with a website, which is at its core an informational medium, we can go a lot deeper and expand on things that we could only imply or suggest with something as concise as a logo. So going back to our website visitors, remember, they arrive with questions and it's your website's job to answer them. And these questions broadly fall into two groups, informational and emotional. 
informational questions are outward information seeking questions like, does this contractor do basements? What's your remodeling process? What's their phone number? And how can I contact them? And those are pretty straightforward. But while people are there on your website looking through the pages, they're also looking for answers to questions that are below the surface, which are questions like, does this contractor do quality work? Will you help them solve problems when they arise? And will you show up on time and clean up when you leave? So ultimately, they're wondering if they can trust you. And then we have information seeking questions that people ask in order to answer the questions about trust, which are questions like, how many years have you been in business? What does your past work look like? Do you offer a warranty? So you can see how some of these information seeking questions are actually getting at the emotional questions around trust. So the thing about your website is that it is made of content and the content is primarily words and pictures. And those words and pictures are going to determine how well you answer the information, informational and emotional questions about your site visitors uh, that your site visitors have in their heads when they arrive and start looking around. So let's talk about how we get your website, specifically your content, to do a good job answering those questions. The content on your website should perform, perform certain functions. It should be there for a reason. And we came up with something that we use to guide the content we put on important pages like a homepage or a service page or another page along those lines. And we call it the TSEC framework. And that stands for trust, connect, excite, and clarify. Each one of these refers to certain types of content. Content that you would find on an individual page like your homepage. But you can also use it to guide what types of content you should include throughout your entire website. So keeping in mind that the goal of our content is to turn visitors into leads, we'll break it down and see what type of content each piece refers to. So the first is trust. And that's going to include your brand and the design of your website, making that first impression. It's also going to include content like testimonials, reviews, or professional affiliations, like with Pro, the types of things that build credibility. Next, we have Connect. That is the content that obviously helps you connect with your visitors. This might be information about the company history, about the team, your points of differentiation, and of course, having a clear message that communicates your values and purpose. Then, Excite. So this includes content like project photos in your portfolio. If you're blogging, maybe it's inspirational content. Maybe you have drone videos of your completed projects or 3D renderings. We have contractors who, who use really great before and after photos or even plans or material lists for completed projects. Anything that's going to get someone really excited about their own home project. And then we have Clarify. This includes information about your services, your process, getting in touch, maybe an FAQ, that's frequently asked questions, uh, the sort of content that gets to the nuts and bolts of what you do and how you do it. There's actually one more thing that we want to add as far as content goes, and it's really key in getting someone to cross that threshold from visitor to lead, and that is call to action. We'll add an extra C to our TSEC. Uh, what's important about that call to action is, is that all the other things come first. You really need to prove yourself and give your visitors some good reasons to choose you. You want to earn it. So let's look at an example of how we apply the TSEC framework when laying out a homepage. This is the homepage for Franz Construction, Construction, a home remodeler based in San Luis Obispo. And let's just work our way down the page and talk about how the content that you see fits the TSEC model. So in the first section, uh, the hero image and the navigation bar with the logo, it's really about establishing trust right away. You've got the big bold heading, their nice branding, great photo. It's meant to really make that impactful first impression since it's the portion of the website that will be visible first. Next, we have a couple of sections that are meant to connect with the visitor. There's a little bit here about the contractor and a statement uh, about their value proposition your experience is our product. Next, we move back to trust with a nice testimonial here. And then a section to clarify what services are being offered and um, provide an opportunity to get more info on that. Um, and then finally, the, 
the last portion of the homepage, we've got a section under connects that talks about their points of differentiation. And we've got another section here about trust that includes the logo with their preferred partners. And then finally, the bottom, oops, a little out of order here, sorry. At the bottom, we have our call to action. And we don't wanna forget about that. So the bottom line is that your website should be inspirational, credible, and easy to use. They arrive with questions and you want to leave them with, and you want them to leave with questions answered and an internal dialogue along these lines. I want my home to look like that. These guys look like they know what they're doing and I definitely found what I was looking for. So if we go back and revisit our funnel uh, with our Attract and Convert framework, now it's time to flip it around and put that horse out uh, back in front of the cart and learn how to attract those strangers and turn them into visitors. So I'd like to take a quick pause here before we dive into marketing strategy. Uh, a point that's worth coming back to is the idea that one does not simply do marketing. I mean, you could, but that would be like walking out your front door and cupping your hands around your mouth and shouting, does anybody need a home remodel? Kind of like America's sweetheart, Laura Dern here. Uh, the odds of your efforts reaching the right people are slim to none. There are certain fundamentals and principles that need to be understood in order to approach your marketing efforts in a way that will maximize your lead generation. So I'm not going to list off everything you need to include in your marketing strategy because there is no one size fits all. I'd like to use the rest of our time to arm you with the information you need to apply the attract to convert principles to your marketing strategy so that you can turn strangers into visitors and ultimately convert better leads. So we just walked through the foundational elements of your marketing. In order to maximize your opportunities to convert better leads, you need a strong brand and website that clearly communicates trust professionalism, and know-how. The conversion point needs to be primed and ready to go before you can try uh, to get the right people at the right time. Now, where the key principles to branding were professionalism and trust, principles we definitely don't want to lose in our marketing efforts, the key principles of a successful marketing strategy are attention and relevancy. So why? A relevant or right message in front of the right person at the right time in the right place is bound to get their attention. Kind of like selling water to someone changing their tire on this post-apocalyptic sweltering road, or maybe a chili dog stand outside of a bar at closing time. Let's look at this in a different way. This is the relevancy and attention formula. The right person plus the right place plus the right time plus the right message equals attention. Where do we start harnessing this formula for our benefit? Let's dive into each element one by one. I would argue that the most important element is the right person. To figure out the right place, right time, right message, we need to know who we're talking to in the first place. The right person is a potential high quality lead. They have the right budget, they're in your preferred service area, they're looking for services that you provide, and their project has a timeline that fits into your process and your schedule. They are your target audience. So what information do you need in order to formulate your target audience? Demographic information such as gender, education, age, income, and location are all very helpful. We really don't see many 18 to 24 year olds buying homes, much less renovating them. So they might be excluded from our target market. Psychographic information is also hugely important. We wanna know what their interests are. Where do they spend their time online? Are they retired? Do they have baby number two on the way? The more information we have, the better. So this is an exercise to help you visualize your right person. And this is called a customer persona. It's easy to remember the bad stuff, we all, but we all have clients that we work with and think, I wish every client was like that. Think of what exactly made them stand out like that to you. For example, uh, earlier this year, we had a client come to us with their ideal customer already locked and loaded. It was a 50 plus woman or couple retired in their forever home already and have completed a remodel before. Because they know who they want to work with, we have been able to develop their brand 
website and marketing strategy based on who we're looking to attract. If you don't have a customer persona built, I would suggest looking at clients you have previously worked with or are currently working with. Uh, for example, last year I had a client tell me about an experience with a couple that turned out to be a dream client. It was a husband and wife. One was an engineer and the other was a doctor at the VA hospital. I know, I see the dollar signs too, never hurts. They understood when the electrical work ended up going up by $5,000 because they listened when he explained the issue. They were responsive, enthusiastic, and easy to work with. This type of information has helped me hone in his target audience to find more people like this couple for him to work with. So let's walk through developing a customer persona together. Visualizing this information will make it easier for you to go back to your marketing team and say, this is who I want to work with. It will be easier to bring in the job you want if you know what the right job is, of course. So let's say you had a client named Rita that you completed a whole home remodel for last year. Rita had a clear vision. She had great taste, a flexible budget. She was involved in communicating with you, but let you take the lead. She trusted your judgment, was low maintenance, and was thrilled with the finished product. Three cheers for people like Rita, am I right? Now let's take a leap and look at a completely different project that was also a huge success, Joe. Here is Joe's basement transformation and project details. He had a list of wants and needs. He had a flexible budget. He understood when appliances were backordered due to supply chain issues because he was agreeable and easy to work with. Now, in looking at them side by side, you can see that these are two very different people with different lifestyles. Rita's right place, right time, right message is going to look completely different from Joe's. And that's why it's important to understand who you're putting your message in front of. The contractor that wants to work with Rita might not want to work with Joe and vice versa. And that's completely fine. You want to attract the projects that are right for you. So now that you know your right person, we find them where they are. You determined that part of the reason Rita and Joe were the right fit was because they have the budget. So you got to ask yourself, are you swimming where the people with the right budget are fishing? The thing is, as we talked about before, the options for swimming adds up to a very big list. Let's look at Rita and Joe again. Rita's online habits look very different from Joe's. So the contractor looking for more Rita's is going to want to spend their marketing efforts on social media marketing, Google ads, and local SEO to start. The contractor going after the Joe's of the world is going to want to have a presence on Instagram, display ads, and video marketing. So let's briefly dive into a few of the key places. So this is an example of a Google search engine results page or SERP. The SERP has three right places where you can reach your right person. First, uh, there's paid search results, then local search results, and then organic search results. On top there is the paid search results section. This is at the top of the page and these results are placed using Google ads. Digital marketers like me create keyword-based text ads and that we then place into the ads auction with our bid and our targeting parameters, those demographic and psychographic pieces that we talked about earlier. The second spot where you can show up on the first page of Google is the local search results or the local pack. This is, the primarily, uh, this is primarily dependent on proximity to the individual performing the search or the location included in their query. The third spot is organic search results. And it may be third on this list, but your organic ranking for high search volume keywords relating to your business can be the make or break in terms of your website into a lead gen of turning your website into a lead generating machine. The SERP is very keyword fo focused. If you know that you're hoping to do more kitchen remodels, your keyword strategy should be to dominate the SERP for kitchen remodels. Your Google ads will be kitchen remodel focused. Your Google business remodel. Your Google business profile will be optimized for kitchen remodels, and the content on your site will be optimized for kitchen remodels. So we briefly touched on Google search ads at the uh, beginning when we reviewed the SERP. We also have the opportunity to use Google ads or another search engine marketing tool to place display ads on the website where your target audience spends their time. Display ads are a great opportunity to pair relevant visuals with persuasive content. And now, Email marketing, 91% of consumers use email. The other 9% are apparently just some toddler who ran away with their parents' phone. 
the email inbox is one of the most intimate places on the web, and each of our inboxes are uniquely us. Email marketing is your opportunity to speak directly to your target audience in their inbox at a time that's convenient for them. Coupled with the right messaging, email can become one of your most impactful marketing channels. I highly recommend email marketing to leads you consider lost and to clients with whom you have previously worked just to keep them in the loop. Of course, we have social media. We recommend having a consistent, authentic presence on at least one social media platform, preferably a visual one. Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest are a great fit for remodeling contractors and custom home builders because you can basically use them as a social portfolio to showcase your work. And as you can see, it's also helpful to know your target audience because different cohorts spend time on different social media platforms. There's a reason I don't have TikTok or Snapchat on this list. We don't need to waste our time on platforms where your target audience does not spend their time. All right, so we have the right people and the right place. Now it's time to determine where we hit them or when we hit them and what and with what message. So here is where I would like to introduce the digital marketing funnel because timing has everything to do with where they are within the funnel. A marketing funnel is a model that shows the way a potential customer goes from becoming aware of your brand to purchasing the goods or services you offer. This model involves several stages of customer engagement with the brand. We use marketing funnels to understand the needs of your target audience in each stage, optimize your marketing efforts, and generate better leads. Where we hit them, when we hit them, and what we hit them with are all dependent on where they are within the funnel. So the top of the funnel is the first stage of the buyer's journey. They have just decided on or are considering a remodel or custom home project. They're beginning to research online, see what styles they like, estimate costs, and compile info. Then we have the middle of the funnel. This is the stage of the journey where the buyer is focused on education and engagement. They have visited your website after seeing one of your ads or when you popped up as one of the results on a Google search. They're poking around to see the projects you've worked on and if you're the type of contractor that they would like to work with. At this point, they might subscribe to your email newsletter or play around with informational tools you have on your website. Then at the bottom of the funnel, uh, it's the last stage of the buyer's journey where the lead makes the purchasing decision. The last stage is the conversion point. At the bottom of the funnel, the buyer is ready to make a move and it's up to your website to inspire the conversion and make the conversion point easily accessible. Now you may have noticed that the digital marketing funnel is the same basic structure of the attract and convert journey. We go from strangers to visitors to leads, top, middle, and bottom. So that brings us to messaging where the relevancy and attention formula all comes together and where strangers officially become visitors. So it's time to hit the right person in the right place at the right time with the right message. As you can probably see, right time and right message go hand in hand. We wanna craft our message based on where that right person is in the funnel. Crafting these messages is an art, but I have some tips to get you started that you can apply throughout the funnel. First of all, your content needs to be relevant and persuasive in order to cut through the noise. No matter what platform you're on, you're going to have competition gunning for the attention of the same audience. That audience is looking for you to address the problem and provide a solution. Use relevant and persuasive, sorry, use relevant language to resonate with them and persuasive language to establish yourself as a trustworthy authority. They hate their kitchen. The remodeling process overwhelms them. They don't even know where to start. Address it and provide a solution. Lastly, your message needs to be actionable. Provide a bridge to your website and guide them with the exact action you would like them to take. Click here, call now, learn more, request a consultation, really spell it out for them. So let's look at some top of the funnel messages. These are examples of display ads you might, as you might see them in the display network. Assume they know nothing about you. Again, spell it out for them with display ads. Show relevance by calling out that you provide the services they're searching for, such as quality basement finishing or Palm Desert bathroom remodels. Next, search ads are great for crafting compelling messaging. You can see there is more opportunity for written content than display ads. And again, spell it out. 
if I'm looking to build an accessory dwelling unit and I see top Portland ADU builder and over 30 years of experience, I'm going to think that these guys probably know what they're doing and I'm going to want to learn more about them. A downloadable or ebook is a fantastic way to exchange your knowledge packaged together in a downloadable PDF for something of value such as an email address. Here, we're offering the ultimate home remodeling guide and the ultimate guide to building an ADU. Each hold information that people at the top of the funnel are seeking in order to get started. Then you have their email address and they have your branded expertise at their fingertips. Next, let's look at some middle of the funnel content examples. As I'm sure you all know, the main question our clients say their clients ask is, how much is it gonna cost? We can attest to the fact that this is one of the main searches performed as well. The middle of the funnel is all about education and engagement, and this type of tool allows for visitors to estimate not only the cost of your pro their project, in this case an ADU, but also the return on investment you can expect by increasing the value of their home with an ADU. A page like this is great for SEO, engagement, and conversion rates. Next we have blogging. Blogging has many technical benefits. SEO, increasing position rank and domain authority, backlinks, but it's also just a great way to position yourself as a thought leader and create content your audience is looking for. You can see here some examples are how to approach your budget for a whole house remodel and how to choose an appliance package for your remodel, all relevant and searchable topics. As I mentioned earlier, email marketing is a fantastic way to stay in touch with potential leads, lost leads, or clients that you worked with years ago. This example is from a remodeling contractor in the Portland area. We send out a newsletter once a quarter that shows off new work, projects in progress, blog posts, and industry news. Each section, of course, links back to their website. Then, at the bottom of the funnel, we are ready for a conversion. This is where we circle back, where visitors become leads. Your site has been optimized to maximize conversion points, such as clicking to call, filling out a contact form, or sending an email. So we've gone through the Attract and Convert journey. To recap, in order to turn strangers into visitors, you need to build awareness, increase traffic, and improve relevance. In order to do so, you need to identify who your target audience is so that you can then determine where they are and when to hit them with a relevant, persuasive, and actionable message. Next, of course, you want to turn visitors into leads. Hopefully your website and brand were designed to position you to bring in the jobs you want. By following the TSEC framework, trust, connect, excite, clarify, and call to action, when the right people land on your website, you are ready to make that conversion. Now that we have the full picture, let's look at this one more time. Our marketing strategy is to attract the right people in the right place at the right time with the right message. Say that five times fast. Your brand strategy is to convert those visitors by making sure that they like what they see. Our brand strategy is foundational to our marketing efforts. Without a solid brand strategy, we'll be attracting the right people to the wrong place and we'll lose that conversion opportunity. So that was a lot of information. Uh, this webinar uh, you know, went through a lot of stuff. Here are the key takeaways that I'd like you to remember for your next marketing strategy meeting with your agency or your in-house team. Attract and convert is the big picture of lead generation. Your logo sends a message. Make sure you like the message it's sending. Your website is your most important marketing asset and your 24 seven sales tool. Your strategy should be driven by attention and relevancy. The right person in the right place at the right time with the right message is sure to garner attention. Your content needs to be actionable. Bridge the gap and invite those strangers in. But you might be asking, how do I start applying these principles to my marketing? And we would say, assess where you are now. Our approach involves starting with first things first, as I mentioned earlier. So I recommend starting with an assessment of your most important marketing asset, your website. A domain analysis is a great way to analyze the current state of your website in terms of your domain authority, your organic and paid traffic, your keywords, your competition, and more. You can do this with your marketing provider, or you can request a domain analysis from the Kiyoki Contractor Marketing Team. 
we are offering a free domain analysis to all who view this webinar and who are attending today. Um, and my colleague Mitchell just dropped a link to that in the chat, but you can also go to kioki.com backslash domain analysis for contractors to start laying the foundation for marketing success. And that link is at the bottom there, but also in the chat. All right, so it's time for some questions. It looks like we do have some time for some questions. Um, and I think maybe some came through the chat. If not, I think Angela might have a couple uh, on deck that uh, we can go through. Right, does anyone have uh, questions for Laura? I know this is, I'm going to do the awkward wait time because sometimes it's hard to fine. get yeah. unmuted and get over here. While they're thinking, Laura, I have a question for you. Yeah. You were talking about Snapchat and TikTok. And yeah. though I do think those are younger platforms like TikTok. I have a lot of 50 something year old friends who spend two hours a day on it. And I <laughs> literally am flabbergasted by that yeah but, um they're like it's like watching a movie i'm like okay um and, and i have seen some very creative advertising on there so is there a time mm -hmm. i guess depending on your culture of your company that that is a good platform for a modeling company yeah you know what if that's where you have determined your audience is then it's something worth considering including in your marketing strategy uh, what I would say and what we will cover in our social media presentation is that uh, a platform like TikTok isn't necessarily the place that you that people go to make those big purchasing big decision. decisions, like, mm -hmm. yeah, like a remodel uh, or building a custom home. Um, but it is a great way to establish culture and get mm -hmm. people to learn more about you because they're going to look at your website, but they're also, if you have links to social media platforms, they're going to look at those too. And that's why it's great to have a consistent um, presence on all of those platforms. So don't necessarily count TikTok out. TikTok but it's out, more for developing culture or showcasing exactly. that and getting people to kind of get to yeah. know your team a little bit. I yeah. And, yeah. And on social media, I'm video is king and TikTok is a video platform. So right. uh, yeah. Is YouTube still like in the top three search platforms? It is, yes, it is. It is more so a search engine than it is a social media platform at this point. And I see Keith has a question. How do you think contractors should best use video? Yeah, that's a great question. So as I was kind of alluding to, social media is a great place for video and um, using that to explain about your business. Um, there's some stat, and I don't know it off the top of my head, but you know, where a picture is worth a thousand words, a video is worth like 1.8 million or something like that, mm -hmm. because you can show while you're explaining. A lot of contractors that we work with have process videos or even just an introduction to their business on the homepage. Um, of course, if you're going to be using video on your website, keep in mind that video can kind of bog the speed down of your website. Um, so it has its place on there, but just keep in mind that um, speed of a website is hugely important to um, search engine optimization. So while it has a place there, it's maybe not necessarily the first thing you want people to see. But um, so use it on your website, use it on social media, and use it to explain about your business while you're showing people about your business. Mm -hmm. And how, like, what about videos? I, you know, we have been told a few times Kate and I that it you know if you're if something looks too staged that people mm. aren't going to buy it but at the same time you don't want to look like you're unprofessional right yeah that's a great question so I would say if you're going to get video produced that would be the video that you would want to put on your website because your website is just inherently more polished than your social media platforms are going to be. Mm -hmm. And when you're on social media, you want to be authentic. So even the cell phone video where you're just following someone around a job site, that can be great content for social media, but that's not necessarily what you're going to want to put on your website. So polished and produced is for the website, just that kind of spur of the moment, showing you around the job site, taking photos, taking videos, that's more for social media. Right. Okay. 
And then Lee, I see your question about, will we get a copy of this webinar? Yes, after um, it might be a day, like probably tomorrow, you will receive a follow-up email with a link um, for the free domain analysis, which is also in the chat. And um, you'll receive a recording of this and we will load it on our YouTube channel as well. So you can always go to the Pro Mid-Atlantic YouTube channel to find past educational videos and things like that. And then it will also have Kiyoki's contact in that follow-up email. Mm -hmm. What about other questions? Any other questions? How about let's it, with digital marketing, like mm -hmm. is there an expected number of leads that they should be getting a month? And I know it's probably different based on like whether they're design build, big projects, right. or replacement company sort of moment. But right, exactly. Actually, yeah. Um, so so the answer to this question kind of depends on a few factors, like you mentioned. Uh, one being how many leads are you looking for? So mm -hmm. some contractors do big budget jobs and they're only looking for four to five projects a year while other contractors have smaller tickets that they're looking for more like, you know, seven or 50 to 75 projects a year. And to kind of boil it down very simply, if you need 60 jobs and you know that you have a 30% conversion rate uh, when you get in the room with the lead, then we or your marketing provider uh, are aiming to generate about 200 high quality leads throughout the year from your website or referrals, et cetera. The second factor uh, is how much you're willing to put in. And I don't just mean budget. Working closely with your marketing team will help them hone in on your message and your target audience to generate better leads. So you gotta know how many you wanna bring in and you gotta be a part of the, uh, the marketing as a whole. Uh, we have some clients you know, that it's difficult to get a hold of them and some that you know, the phone's ringing off the hook and it's super fun to work with clients that are actively engaged in it. And of course, you're bringing in a marketing provider or have an in-house team that are supposed to be taking that on for you, but you're the one who knows the most about your business. And it's really fun for us to get in touch with that. And, you know, we feel really inspired by that, but those are the two big factors. And yeah, you made good points that it's dependent on how many. Right. Okay. Well, and what about people who like, I have several members who are like, oh, we don't do a lot of digital marketing, advertising, anything like that. Cause all of our leads come from referrals. I mean, mm -hmm. Does this still apply to those sort of companies or how, what would you, how would you answer that? Yeah, I would definitely say that this still applies to them because kind of what we were talking about in the branding portion, even referrals still go through your website. And so if they heard amazing things about working with you mm -hmm. from their friend or family member, and then they go to your website and Wah, wah. like that yeah exactly that <laughs> digital equivalent of that coffee table they're going to be like really I think I got I think I found the wrong people um so having your online footprint match what that referral is talking and saying about you is hugely important because they are inherently going to make their own um judgment of you when they get to your website so it is still important to you know, showcase what you do accurately online. Cool. Um, if you have questions and you're not comfortable throwing them out there, just throw them in the chat. We'll be looking for those. So one of the things like I, that we've had a, a topic in the past where we kind of debated the like putting information and like it, it sounds like especially millennials and younger generation, well, younger than me, at least they're doing a lot of um, research before even reaching out with a phone call, mm -hmm. you know, or, and then, yeah. so they're looking for specific things. And um, some of our members, especially during this time when they're getting so many leads and they just want to kind of weed out some of the, mm -hmm. the prospects that aren't truly their ideal client. They are, you know, have debated whether to put like pricing information, financing information, things like that on their on their websites, what, what yeah. do you refer, recommend? Yeah, I think that those are all really great ideas because the whole idea behind our approach is to not give you 
more leads, we want to get you better leads. And I think that's where everyone wants to be rather than, you know, if it's 200 really low quality leads, you would rather have 100 high quality leads. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, it's technically a lower volume, but they match the work that you want to do. That's going to be so much easier to make those calls and have those discussions with those leads. So adding those qualifying uh, pieces to your website or your marketing efforts, uh, however you put those out in your email marketing, I think is a great tool. So I showed you guys that um, cost calculator on one of my clients' websites. And that is so that people can go in there and basically qualify or disqualify themselves. Mm -hmm. Uh, specifically with, you know, ADUs or kitchen remodels, all of this stuff, people don't necessarily know what that's going to cost. And usually they think it's going to be a lot less than what it actually is. So Mm -hmm. getting that information up front, they can either go, okay, I need to wait a couple of months or get in touch with some sort of financer to make this project a reality. Um, And there's going to be enough people you know, in that correct, that that target audience that you guys want to reach that putting that qualifying information out there is not going to hurt you. In fact, it's going to help your bottom line. So having those pieces out there, like a cost calculator, um, a blog post about how much something's going to cost, or even, you know, here's the areas where I service. I know a lot of complaints that we get sometimes are, you know, oh, the leads that were coming in, they're completely outside of my service area. Like I only want to work in here. I don't want to drive two hours to this job. Mm -hmm. Um, putting the areas that you work and making people say, okay, well, I don't live in that area. Um, Sometimes the job is worth it. So they might put it out there anyway, but um, putting that information out there. And sometimes we have that in the contact form itself. So as people are going through, they say, okay, I want a kitchen remodel. Here's my budget. And maybe we just have a budget range in there that says, you know, let um, 75,000 starts at 75,000 because they don't necessarily want to entertain jobs that are less than that. So if I come to that saying, okay, I want my kitchen remodeled and my budget's $50,000, I'm going to say, okay, maybe I'm not able to work with you guys because the bottom line here is $75,000. So then I might not fill out the contact form. I'm not going to plug up the inbox, et cetera, um, because I know that I'm not a fit for these guys. I might want to work with them because the work that they do is super exciting. So then I might just take a couple of months save up some more money so that I can eventually work with these guys. Mm -hmm. But that takes those low quality leads out of the equation. Of course, it doesn't work 100% of the time, but I think that qualifying information is hugely important to bringing in better leads. Right. Um, Okay, Lee has a a question in the chat, so I'm just gonna read it and then we'll make sure we understand it. A lot of design, build, or model companies' websites have similar branding um and websites understanding that we have to know our target audience how do we better address our wording on our homepage to jump straight to questions i'm not sure if i'm reading that rightly and then what problem do we solve and who do we solve it for is there such a thing as being too direct and later, yeah, I think I understand this okay. question. I think it might be about, you know, not trying to come across uh, the same as your competitors. And I think that's a good thing to think about because you might, you know, have someone next door who does almost exactly the same thing that you do, but of course you're different companies. So work that your website can do for you is to differentiate you from your competition. You got to pick out that thing that you do better than them, that you do differently from them and really call that out, whether that's your process, um, even just the work that you do, the type of work that you do, um, all of that stuff. So differentiating yourself is something that your website can do. So maybe they go to your website and your neighbor's website and they say, okay, I really like that these guys have a simplified process or they put the client at the center of the process. So I want to work with these guys whereas they maybe didn't have a very clear process at all. So whatever you can do on your website to differentiate yourself is uh, beneficial. And that's something, so we have a three phase process basically. So the first phase is discovery and analysis where we work with you to discover what that differentiation is. And maybe you already know, and so it'll be super easy and we can just plug away, but it's worth it to explore what exactly that is. So we can make that front and center on your website. And, you know, you can do that with any marketing provider, whether you have that in-house or uh, you're already working with an agency, but that's something that we highly recommend you do. And then what problem do we solve and who do we solve it for? 
Um, so that's basically, that's another something that we uh, work through in the discovery phase. Um, and that's kind of up to you. you. You're the ones who have the answer to that question. Um, if you're a remodeling contractor and you just do kitchens and bathrooms, you know, you're solving the problem that someone has spent too much time in their home throughout the pandemic. They hate their kitchen. They don't want to move because they like the location, but their home is no longer working for them. So that's an example of a problem that you would be solving. You're making their home work for them. And that's basically the value proposition that you would put out there. Um, and if there's such a thing as being too direct, I think that's maybe to the point that uh, we were discussing of, you know, we only work with people within a certain budget. I think, of course, you don't say like, you know, no one under $80,000 need not apply um, type of thing. But I think just putting that information out there nicely. So including that in your contact form, like having people select their budget range, if the lowest you had was 75,000. And again, like I said, my budget was, was 50,000. That's not going to offend me. I'm just going to say, you know, okay, maybe these guys don't necessarily work with people like me, or you can have an option that says other, and then people might select that. But again, that's going to be a way for people to kind of get through the cracks and have those low quality leads kind of plug up your uh, CRM and your inbox. So I don't, I, you know, I think there's a way to say it nicely. Uh, you don't necessarily need to say um, we don't work with people outside of this service area or yada, yada, yada. Um, there's, of course, always a kind way to say everything. But that's right. a good question. <laughs> and a professional marketing team can help with that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think, too, back to um, differentiating yourself, I think of David Luberger, who is how I got to know Kiyoki Marketing in the first place. He nice. has a whole... Um, you know, presentation on selling your why and really figuring out what it mm -hmm. is about you that's unique and different right. and, you know, your kind of your company culture, whatever it is, your, your personality yeah. culture. So anyway, all right. I mean, well, we could spend a whole five week series talking about that value proposition and the why. <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, I am going to let everybody go get back to work. Uh, thank you so much. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Feedback. Thank you. There's a little feedback thing in the chat. Yeah. And I'll include that too in the email that comes out to the group, just so Kiyoki, you can get a little more feedback there. And everyone, mm -hmm. thanks for participating. And we hope to see you again next Tuesday yeah, for let's see. that webinar. I'm trying to remember which one is a Yeah, next. that is the branding and website. So, you know, I talked a bit about um, branding and website this week, but our uh, lead designer Robin Levy is going to dive in even more and she's she's pretty incredible so uh, I would highly recommend tuning in for that one all right well thank you so much Laura we appreciate it yeah, thank time. you and everyone have a great day Keith thanks for thanks for your help today yeah thank you Keith all right bye <laughs>